the sect master with no cultivation, yet even Yiguchen, the creator of Celestial Wanderer, must respectfully call him Big Brother. Turns out, he awakened the Supreme Sect system. As long as he successfully takes in a disciple, he can summon strong beings from the heavens. The man's name is Wang Feng, who was also a corporate drone in his previous life. He died suddenly and came to the mystic Azure continent, where cultivators are esteemed and mortals are fated to toil. Wang Feng, newly arrived, wasn't even settled when a cultivating immortality tycoon forcibly collided with him, making him realize he was just a novice. Fortunately, he had a system, but unfortunately, the system was useless at the moment. It could only be activated upon completing the first mission, or he would be forcibly erased if failed. Thus, he had no choice but to adhere to the requirements to establish a sect and recruit a disciple within three days, all in a single thatched hut. Just as Wang Feng was at his wit's end, a fatty arrived at the sect's entrance. It turns out, he came up the mountain seeking refuge in a sect to marry a wife, but no sect was willing to take him. So, he came to Wang Feng's newly created divine immortal sect with the last glimmer of hope, seeing only a thatched hut as the sect he was about to run away, but then he discovered an unexpected addition, a hanger-on clinging to his leg. The fatty curiously asked, Who are you? I am indeed the sect master of this divine immortal sect. Wang Feng is my name. I see that you have a unique bone structure, a one in a million cultivation talent. After careful consideration, I am willing to take you as my disciple. You're kidding right? You call yourself the sect master. This divine immortal sect is just a shabby thatched hut. You don't look like a good person from your dress, but a dying man has no baseline. Wang Feng embraced the fatty, and after a long two minutes of persuasion, the fatty began to lose himself and fantasize about becoming an immortal, saving damsels in distress. So he happily handed over all his belongings. Wang Feng, seeing the task about to be completed, also showed a sly smile. But just as he was about to take over the cloth bag, the fatty held onto it tightly and posed a soul-searching question. What if I can't become an immortal, and I can't stand eating less? You have to guarantee me big meals every meal. Facing fatty's numerous unreasonable demands, Wang Feng wanted to slap him, but seeing that time was up, he could only reluctantly agree. Fatty finally relaxed and released his grip upon hearing this. Just as the bag was dropped, a system notification announced the successful activation of the Supreme Sect system, inviting Wang Feng to open the attribute panel to view the rewards. As Wang Feng was about to open the panel, Fatty embraced him tightly, praising, Sect Master, you are so kind. Not only did you accept me, but you also spoil me. Even my mother has never been this good to me. Meanwhile, Wang Feng just wanted to check his rewards. After sending Fatty away, he reopened the panel, only to be disappointed by his character's attributes. Cultivation, none. Physique, none. Bloodline, none. But he had a chance for one summon and one lottery draw. Summoning could bring forth powerful beings from all heavens, bound to the sect and ready to teach its disciples. Wang Feng, reminded of his initial destitute state upon arriving in this land, did not hesitate to use his summoning opportunity. Moments later, a white-haired youth appeared, shocking Fatty, who hurriedly ran inside, intending to inform Wang Feng, but found him leisurely drinking tea. Fatty pointed outside, exclaiming, Brother Sect Master, how can you be in the mood for tea? It's like the apocalypse out there. Wang Feng, excited, rushed outside to find that the white-haired youth was none other than Cloud White City Lord, Yi Guchen. But Wang Feng was puzzled. In this world of cultivating immortality, it's all about the realm of cultivation. Yi Guchen is a swordsmanship master, but I wonder if he can fight here? So, he opened Yi Guchen's attribute panel, only to mockingly comment, Elder Yi is only at the peak of the Marquis Realm. Fatty was terrified by this revelation. In the entire Sunblaze Empire, a Marquis Realm was considered top tier. But seeing Fatty's reaction, Wang Feng was reassured. Indeed, a strong person is strong anywhere. At that moment, Yi Guchen approached Wang Feng and respectfully bowed, I am Yi Guchen. Greetings to the sect master. Fatty's worldview was shattered by this. He had lived for many years, but had never seen a Marquis Realm powerhouse bowing to anyone. What kind of divine being was this sect master? Seeing Fatty becoming much more subdued, Wang Feng inquired about the other lottery opportunity from the system, learning that the lottery could draw the summoned person's constitution, bloodline, cultivation, etc., which could then be used by the sect disciples or the host himself. Excited by the prospect, Wang Feng exclaimed, Isn't this like taking off from where I stand? Quick, draw for me. Unexpectedly, Wang Feng drew 10% of Yi Guqing's cultivation level from the lottery. The system prompted him to choose whether to use it for himself or give it to a disciple in the sect. Wang Feng thought, I'm still immortal. It's useless to enhance a disciple without strengthening myself first. According to the system, inheriting 10% of Yi Guqing's cultivation could advance him to the early stages of the Ascend Chancellor realm. However, Wang Feng was unsure of the realm's strength, so he asked Fatty about the classification of the cultivating immortality realms. Fatty informed him that this world is divided into 10 major realms, Foundation Establishment, Mystic Veins, Spirit Communication, Mystic General, Ascend Chancellor, Marquis, Mystic Emperor, Mystic Venerate, Mystic Sage, and Supreme Mystic. Although Wang Feng was unimpressed with
with the Ascend Chancellor realm being only fifth, he acknowledged it was better than remaining immortal. He began to absorb the cultivation immediately. As he broke through, Wang Feng felt his body fill with power, and he could hear every movement in the surrounding canyon. Fatty, witnessing this transformation, was once again overwhelmed, thinking, where on earth did this monstrously talented sect leader come from? I must firmly grasp this mighty thigh. He rushed over to Wang Feng, kowtowing and vowing to train hard and not disappoint his sect master's cultivation. Meanwhile, a young girl riding a bird appeared in the sky, catching Wang Feng's attention. Yi Guqing suggested, this woman must be a cultivator, and both her foundation and cultivation level are extraordinary, since she seems to be a fellow practitioner with considerable foundation and cultivation, and she's flying above our divine immortal sect. We should greet her. Elder Yi, perhaps you should call out to her. Yi Guqing, gripping his long sword, planted it into the ground and called out, I do not know who travels above, please come down for a meeting. He then swiftly drew his sword, causing a gust of wind to rise. Wang Feng, taken aback by the grand display, exclaimed, Is this how martial artists greet each other, with such a grand gesture? Upon seeing the hurricane, the woman's face paled in an instant. She then stepped onto a white bird, making an abrupt stop just before the hurricane. At that moment, a flyer fluttered before her eyes. Thinking it was some sort of hidden weapon, she quickly drew her sword from her waist and thrust it directly at the flyer. Just then, Yi Guqing lets out a thunderous rebuke. Do not destroy my sex property. With those words, he slowly drew his long sword, and with a swing, a surge of sword energy immediately gathered on the flyer, pasting it onto the woman's face. The woman fell to the ground, prompting Wang Feng to see Guqing's brute force and thus, instructing Fatty to go and greet her. Fatty tiptoed to the woman and said, esteemed female immortal, are you alright? Seeing this, Yi Guqing withdrew the spirit force from the flyer, and the woman finally sighed in relief, then angrily scolded, who dares litter like this? Wang Feng approached calmly, this is not litter, it is a flyer from my divine immortal sect. The woman first glanced at the flyer, then inquired, is this the divine immortal sect? Indeed, I am the sect master of the divine immortal sect, Wang Feng replied. At that moment, the system prompted, congratulations to the host for discovering a genius, trigger a new mission, recruit ten disciples for respective summons, and lottery chances ten times. Wang Feng was delighted, such generous rewards this time, just recruited Fatty, a mere trifle, and in exchange got Yi Guqin, a grandmaster of swordsmanship. If I can recruit this woman as a disciple, wouldn't it be like soaring to the skies? He then inquired of the woman, young one, your bones are extraordinary, a one in a million cultivation genius. After careful consideration by this sect master, before he could finish, Wang Feng felt a bit sheepish. After all, the woman can ride a bird in flight, her strength must be extraordinary. This kind of routine might work on Fatty, definitely not on her. Unexpectedly, the woman said, the flyer says the divine immortal sect is recruiting disciples. Do you think I qualify? This took Wang Feng by pleasant surprise. He hadn't expected such good fortune to fall into his lap, but the system informed him, if the other party does not pay the entrance fee, the recruitment is not considered successful. Reluctantly, Wang Feng had to ask, although you are interested in joining the sect, you must abide by the rules of the divine immortal sect. So, please hand over all the money you have as an entrance fee. However, the woman employed her ultimate technique, the Koi Pli, sect master brother. I left in a hurry and didn't bring any money. Can I make it up to you later? As this move was played out, Wang Feng, who had been single for over 20 years, found it difficult to resist. However, due to the system's mandatory requirements, he thought to refuse. But unexpectedly, a group of strong individuals suddenly appeared behind the woman, taunting, little beauty, why aren't you running away? Even your father can't protect you now. What can these two-legged monkeys do for you? The woman immediately hid behind Wang Feng, retorting, Lin Yuni, don't be so smug. I am now a disciple of the divine immortal sect. In front of our sect master, how dare you continue such inhuman acts? Lin Yuni laughed uproariously, with just a few monkeys, you should know, the dogs and slaves I've raised have all reached the mystic general realm. Hearing this, the woman trembled in fear. Meanwhile, Wang Feng thought to himself, I thought I was getting a pie from the sky, but turns out I'm the pie for others. Seems like recruiting disciples is going to be tricky this time. However, Fatty broke the silence, little junior sister, don't be afraid. Just a mystic general realm, our sect master can defeat them with just a finger. The minions listening were grinding their teeth in anger, wishing they could tear Fatty apart immediately. This Fatty always causes trouble. Although I'm a realm higher than them, I lack real combat experience. What if I lose and affect my grand plan of recruiting disciples? Just as he was about to say something, the woman preempted him by expressing her gratitude. Thank you, sect master, for rescuing me. Seeing the situation, Wang Feng could only let it be, reassuring. Don't worry, no one can bully you with me here. However, he seemed to have forgotten about Yi Guqing's existence. At this moment, Lin Yuni clearly ran out of patience. What monkey play are you all performing? Go kill them for me, he ordered, and several of his minions charged towards Wang Feng. However, just at the critical moment, Wang Feng found their movements extremely slow. With a casual twist, he bent the incoming greatsword. It seems in this world of cultivating immortality, being one realm higher truly makes a difference.
once. I wanted to use them for practice, but it would be too embarrassing to struggle against them in front of my disciples. So, he called out loudly, Yi Guchen. Yi Guchen, hearing his name, drew out Soaring Rainbow, and within merely 0.5 seconds, he had slain all the minions and placed Soaring Rainbow at Lin Yuni's neck. The woman beside them was immensely shocked. Even mystic general realm beings are considered above average in the entire Sun Blaze Empire. To be able to instantly kill five mystic generals, he must have reached the Marquis Realm. Meanwhile, Lin Yuni was sweating profusely. Do I really have to resort to this move? He then clasped his hands in a pleading gesture. Senior, I, Lin Yuni, was blind and failed to recognize the great. Please spare me. I promise to leave and have my father, the long-scale Marquis, prepare a generous gift for you. However, Wang Feng was unimpressed. No matter who your father is, if he dares to come, I shall eliminate him without hesitation. The woman, hearing the name Long-scale Marquis, gritted her teeth in anger. The Long-scale Marquis's mansion wields vast power. Lin Tianxiong, the Long-scale Marquis, not only possesses Marquis Realm cultivation but also commands a 500-strong Long-scale Legion with many highly skilled Ascend Chancellor Realm generals. Their strength is comparable to some medium-sized sects. Thus, they can commit all sorts of evils. They persecuted me, leaving me no choice but to flee. Yet, this divine immortal sex sect master doesn't even consider the Long-scale Marquis's mansion worth noting. Perhaps he truly has the power to seek revenge for me. Wang Feng was startled by the sudden kneeling and quickly asked, What's the matter? Why such a grand gesture all of a sudden? Master, initially I joined the divine immortal sect indeed to seek refuge from disaster, but now I am convinced that you, Master, can surely uphold justice for the Ling family. Wang Feng, curious, inquired, What exactly is your grievance with Lin Yuni? The disciple, during an excursion, encountered Lin Yuni, the young lord of the long-scale Marquis's mansion. He coveted my beauty and attempted to dishonor me, but I managed to escape by lock. I thought the matter was over, but upon returning home, I found Lin Yuni had led the powerful members of his mansion to massacre hundreds of my Ling family members. Only with my father's desperate protection was I able to escape. A feud as deep as killing my father cannot coexist under the same sky. If I could personally avenge this, I would devote everything to the sect master from this day forth. Rest assured, whether you are a disciple of this sect or not, I will seek justice for this matter. However, the captured Lin Yuni was no longer compliant. He thrust his hands into the ground, kicking up a cloud of dust, and took the opportunity to flee. Wang Feng, watching Lin Yuni attempting to escape, was not flustered but instead commented, shouldn't the villains in manga be stubbornly resisting or begging for mercy at this point? How come this guy doesn't follow the usual script? He reassured the worried little Wu beside him, don't worry, with Elder Yi here, he won't be able to escape. At Wang Feng's command, Yi Guqing slowly drew out Soaring Rainbow, and in a moment, his body was overflowing with white energy, suspending the surrounding people in midair. Wang Feng internally grumbled, why does Lil Yi always have to make such a grand scene every time he takes action? I must talk to him about this next time. On the other side, with Yi Guqing leaping high into the air, he instantly positioned himself above Lin Yuni. Before Lin could react, Yi Guqing executed the Celestial Wanderer technique, sending a surge of white energy hurtling towards Lin Yuni's head. Accompanied by screams, the soaring rainbow sword was sheathed as Lin Yuni and his minions fell to the ground. Simultaneously, a jade pendant flew from Lin's chest. Little Wu, seeing this, trembled with emotion and hurriedly caught the pendant, while Lin Yuni lay on the ground like a dead dog. According to the sect master's will, young master Lin has paid the price. Little Wu was astounded. I knew Yi Guqing was strong from the beginning, but I didn't expect him to be this formidable, especially that celestial wanderer moved just now. Even if the long-scale Marquis himself were to come, he might not escape unscathed. With such a figure as an elder, the divine immortal sect should be well known far and wide. How come I've never heard of it? Just then, Wang Feng interrupted her reverie. I know you initially wanted to join the divine immortal sect for self-preservation, but I sincerely wish to take you as my disciple. However, considering our sect is a hidden major sect, you can make your decision after getting familiar with us. Watching little Wu's excited face, Wang Feng couldn't help feeling proud. Ah, I'm indeed a popular manga creator, managing the plot intricately. At that moment, little Wu handed over a jade pendant. This pendant is a family heirloom of the Ling family. I wish to offer it as my entrance fee to express my gratitude for your immense favor in avenging me today. Wang Feng, examining the pendant, thought to himself whether the system would recognize it as an entrance fee, but it was worth a try. Suddenly, he noticed little Wu blushing. It turns out that this jade pendant is extremely important to her. A token passed down from her father, meant for a future betrothal. As a child, she thought she would never part with it, but today, she handed it over to Wang Feng. After recruiting little Wu as a disciple, Wang Feng also received system rewards, including a summoning and a lottery chance. He then patted little Wu on the shoulder. Now that you're a disciple of the divine immortal sect, your enemies are the sect's enemies. You may now seek a preliminary recompense. At Wang Feng's words, little Wu's eyes filled with murderous intent. Picking up a tree branch from the ground, she slowly approached Lin Yuni, who lay like a dead dog. The enmity of exterminating my family is as deep as the sea of blood. 
If I don't avenge this, I would not be worthy of being the young miss of the Ling family. With that, she pierced Lin Yuni's chest with the branch. Lin Yuni, you took my ancestral jade pendant and teased me. Did you ever think of today? You thought you were untouchable with your powerful backing, but did you foresee this end? Little Lu's ferocious demeanor frightened Fatty, who was beside her. Sect master, little junior sister, she. Let her vent, Wang Feng said. Father, today little Wu personally avenged you. You can rest in peace now. At the same time, the system announced, congratulations to inner disciple Ling Fei Wu for killing a mystic general realm powerhouse, earning 300 sect points. After exacting her revenge, little Wu knelt to the ground, thanking, thank you, sect master and elder Yi, for helping little Wu avenge this blood feud. From now on, in life or death, little Wu belongs to the divine immortal sect. The sect only provides you with a platform for cultivation. Whether or not you can become a true powerhouse ultimately depends on yourself. Wang Feng replied, helping little Wu to her feet. But remember, our divine immortal sect fears no one. If there's a blood feud, no matter how powerful the enemy, we shall eliminate them swiftly. As Wang Feng spoke, little Wu momentarily fell into a daze, tears slowly streaming down her cheeks, resolute in not disappointing the sect master's expectations. Wang Feng, internally pleased, mused, I truly am a popular manga creator, masterfully understanding human emotions. But now that I've boasted so boldly, what shall I teach her? She's not like Fatty, easily deceived with false promises of rapid advancement. Just then, Elder Yi stepped forward. Do you practice swordsmanship? Little Wu immediately bowed in respect. Yes, Elder Yi, would you like to take me as your master? Wang Feng, seeing the opportunity, quickly egged her on. Elder Yi offering to take a disciple is rarer than a flowering stone. What are you waiting for, you silly girl? Understanding the gravity of the moment, Little Wu immediately knelt and performed the ceremonial gesture. Disciple greets master. Your sword stance is commendable, but before I impart any sword techniques, we must first address the internal injury you suffered while being pursued. Get up and follow me to heal your wounds. Wang Feng felt a sense of satisfaction. Initially, the sect was just me alone. Now, not only do we have Elder Yi, but also a talented disciple like Ling Fei Wu. And the best part is I don't have to teach her myself. This is fantastic. However, Fatty, feeling somewhat downcast at the side, thought, little junior sister joined after me and has now become a disciple of a powerful figure like Elder Yi. As the senior disciple, how can I let my junior outshine me? He turned to Wang Feng and asked, sect master, what are your plans for me next? Next, Wang Feng patted Fatty's belly. Look at you, you need to lose some weight. Go and tidy up around the thatched hut. Clean it up a bit. That's the face of our divine immortal sect. Fatty, heart sinking, resignedly began to pull up weeds, muttering complaints. They lured me in with grand promises, treating me like a treasure. But as soon as little junior sister arrived, I've become just grass. Meanwhile, Wang Feng was gleefully checking his rewards, wondering what notable figures he might summon now after recruiting little Wu. Noticing that there's a limit of five elders, he decided to save his summoning for later. His attention attention then shifted to the sect points displayed on the interface. Curious, he inquired about their utility and learned from the system that sect points can not only be used for lottery chances but also to upgrade the system itself. As the system levels up, it allows the host to summon stronger figures, artifacts, and accommodate more disciples. Intrigued, Wang Feng asked, how can I acquire sect points? There are three main ways to acquire sect points, completing tasks issued by the system, defeating enemies, and recruiting top talents into the sect. Wang Feng was puzzled, considering little Wu's cultivation level at her age should qualify her as a top talent, yet her joining didn't add any sect points. Surprisingly, according to the system's evaluation, Little Wu didn't meet the top talent criteria. Curious about his own talent, Wang Feng inquired and found the system rated him as ordinary in aptitude, but top tier due to being the system's host. When he queried about Fatty's talent, the system prompted that exploring Fatty's aptitude would cost 100 sect points. Despite feeling the price steep, curiosity got the better of him, and he clicked to investigate. The system's revelation shocked Wang Feng. Fatty was ranked among the top prodigies. Him, a top prodigy, but the system was certain. Fatty possesses the mystical turtle sage physique. It just hasn't been activated yet. Wang Feng, baffled by the revelation of Fatty's constitution, asked, what exactly is this mystical turtle sage physique? The system explained, the mystical turtle sage physique is one of the top special constitutions in the world. It possesses absolute defense and eternal life. As long as they don't suffer fatal damage, they can live forever. The most fearsome aspect is the inherent defense of power, which allows them to roam freely even if the heavens and earth shatter. Wang Feng was astounded. This fatty actually has such a heaven-defying physique. If he cultivates it to completion, he could be immortal. Resolved to nurture fatty, he thought of the benefits in battles, using him as an impenetrable shield. But the immediate question was how to activate fatty's mystical turtle sage physique. Meanwhile, oblivious fatty was indulging in self-admiration, believing himself to be the most handsome and strongest man in the mystic azure continent. This extremely shameful
shameless move made even the system want to punch him, which noted that the way to activate the mystical turtle sage physique was to endure beatings. Wang Feng was incredulous. What? Enduring beatings? The turtle sage body needs a continuous onslaught. Only through enduring beatings can the bloodline be stimulated and fully awakened. Upon hearing this, Wang Feng couldn't contain his excitement. I was planning to search for some rare and precious treasures, but turns out all I need is to have him beaten. That's simple enough. I can arrange for little Wu to do it, ensuring she doesn't go too far. With his inherent physique, he should recover quickly. At that moment, Fatty felt a sudden chill. Before he could react, a burst of white energy shot out, causing him to cling to Wang Feng's leg in fear. Sect Master, what's happening with that cyclone in the sky? Wang Feng himself was unsure and consulted the system about the phenomenon. It turned out the atmospheric anomaly was a sign of little Wu's impending breakthrough to the mystic general realm, a consequence of Yi Guqing's healing session. He informed Fatty, this is a sign that your junior sister is about to make a breakthrough. Fatty was thunderstruck. My junior sister, since joining the divine immortal sect, not only became a disciple of the formidable Yi Guqing, but is now on the verge of a breakthrough in less than a day. As for me, I remain a mere mortal. If this continues, I might even lose my status as the senior disciple. Wang Feng, noticing Fatty's despondency, pinched him. Don't be discouraged. Tomorrow I will start your training. It's not impossible for you to surpass your junior sister in time, as long as you can endure it. Fatty, hitting his chest in assurance, replied, Thank you, sect master. Rest assured, I can withstand it. I believe in your resilience, Wang Feng said, and I look forward to seeing the commotion you'll cause when you break through to the mystic general realm. Unbeknownst to them, the commotion from Little Wu's breakthrough had caught the attention of a recently awakened demon cultivator. Ha ha ha, I never thought after slumbering for centuries, I'd wake up to find a mystic general realm snack. Oh, the anticipation, becoming my sustenance is your honor. With that, the demon cultivator dashed off, heading straight towards the site of Little Wu's breakthrough. As the atmospheric anomaly receded, Little Wu successfully advanced to the mystic general realm, earning Wang Feng an additional 1,000 sect points. He was inwardly delighted. This girl truly is a genius. Just a day into her discipleship and she's already close to my realm. I'm fortunate to have the system, otherwise, she might have caught up. And where would that leave my face? As he pondered, Little Wu quickly expressed her gratitude. Thank you, sect master, for giving me this opportunity. On the side, Fatty, green with envy, boasted. So what if she reached the mystic general realm? Just wait until I, as her senior brother, reach the Ascend Chancellor realm in a year. That will be impressive. Wang Feng smoothly responded, continue to follow Elder Yi closely. I hope you'll make the name of the divine immortal sect renowned. Meanwhile, the great demon had arrived behind Wang Feng, sneering, ha ha ha, I thought there was only a single mystic general realm snack here, but there are a few ants as well, barely enough to whet my appetite. Immediately, Wang Feng summoned the system and spent 100 sect points to thoroughly investigate the threat. Knowing both the enemy and yourself ensures no peril in battle. This being exerts such immense pressure. I even doubt Yi Guqin could overcome him. Better to be fully informed. The system informed Wang Feng. This being is the Dark Slaughter Demon, a scourge of the Radiant Empire a millennium ago. He was defeated and sealed by the Emperor of Sunblaze Empire, currently in a recently unsealed state with a cultivation level at the peak of Marquis Realm. Wang Feng breathed a sigh of relief. Good, he's not at his peak. Otherwise, not even Yi Guqin could handle him. However, Fatty, emboldened beside him, challenged the demon. Who are you to dare trespass upon the Divine Immortal Sect? Leave immediately, or our Elder Yi of the Divine Immortal Sect will ensure you have no place to rest in death. The great demon looked disdainfully at the humble thatched hut, his contempt palpable. Divine Immortal Sect? Some unknown sect that crawled out of a hole? I've never even heard of it. And this fatty, foolishly bold, dares to speak rudely to the great demon? Wang Feng couldn't help but marvel at fatty's audacity. As a mere mortal, he was berating a powerful entity at the peak of the Marquis Realm. Little Wu urgently reminded her senior brother, Brother, this person's aura is not weaker than masters, at least the Marquis Realm cultivator. The great demon laughed at the acknowledgement. This girl has some insight. Soon, you'll witness my great treasure. However, Fatty fearlessly retorted, so what if he is at the Marquis Realm? Don't we have the sect master? Plus, the sect master said, in one year ascend chancellor, in three years mystic emperor, crushing him would be as easy as lifting a finger. A small bug daring to cause trouble at the divine immortal sect is like a tiny turtle jumping off a cliff utterly ignorant of its fate. This bold claim surprisingly intimidated the great demon, who turned to Wang Feng in confusion. He might have some cultivation, but surely not to such an exaggerated extent? Meanwhile, Wang Feng felt a wave of helplessness. Now I understand why Fatty possesses the mystical turtle sage body. He truly courts death like no other. The great demon, regaining his composure, roared in anger. Won't anyone discipline this fool? Killing him would be sullying my hands. Step forward someone, and spar with me. Upon hearing the challenge, Wang Feng signaled Yi Guqin. Hold him off for now. I'll make sure he doesn't leave here in one piece. With that, he utilized his second summoning chance. Yi Guqin, entering the fray, immediately shattered the incoming fiendish energy with a single sword strike. However, as more fiendish energy assaulted him from behind, Yi Guqing found himself momentarily ensnared.
ensnared. I thought this elder ye of yours was something formidable. Turns out he's easily caught. Little Wu, seeing her master in peril, was frantic. Sect master, please help master. You underestimate your master. How could mere demonic claws hold ye Guchen? As soon as he finished speaking, a burst of sword energy pierced through the bindings and shot towards the great demon. Despite his full resistance, the great demon's hand was penetrated by the sword energy, and he was knocked to the ground. He marveled at the unexpected presence of a marquee realm powerhouse in such a remote place and the mastery of Yi Guchen's sword play. The great demon, not one to hold back, let his fiendish energy overflow, determined to regain some footing in the fight. At this moment, Fatty interjected, taunting the great demon. Oh, looking to run away after being overpowered? There's no such easy escape, unless you crawl under my legs. Don't even think about leaving in scathe. Fatty's taunting sent the great demon into a furious rage. You wretched Fatty, open your dog eyes and see clearly. I am about to unleash my ultimate move. If you keep blabbering, I swear I'll. Before he could finish, Wang Feng punched Fatty in the face. Fatty, looking innocently hurt, asked, Sect Master, why did you hit me? I saw a mosquito on your face. Wang Feng replied, though he thought to himself, this Fatty really asks for it. Almost forgot he's on our side. Meanwhile, the great demon, looking at the wound on his hand, teased Yi Guchen, you're the first since my unsealing to truly whet my appetite. Out of respect for you, I decide to tear you apart with my own hands. A gigantic bloody handprint descended upon Yi Guchen's head. Little Wu was extremely worried, but Yi Guchen remained calm, positioning Soaring Rainbow before him and unleashing the Celestial Wanderer in response. Their clash caused winds to howl and the earth to shake, leveling the entire valley, yet the divine immortal sex thatched hut stood unscathed. Despite the Great Demon's ultimate move, Yi Guchen remained unharmed. The Great Demon, sensing the narrow margin between their powers, thought, Yi Guchen's strength is only slightly lesser than mine. If I go all out, I might be able to kill him, but then that old fellow would sense my unsealing, and I would have to flee. For today, this is where it ends. Another day, when my strength has recovered, I shall seek you out for another battle. Yi Guchen coolly sheathed Soaring Rainbow. Sorry, but you won't be leaving today. I've accomplished what I aimed for. As he spoke, goose feather-like snow began falling from the sky. Wang Feng, seeing this, was overjoyed. This is an omen from heaven and earth. He is coming. At this moment, the great demon had a confused look on his face and asked, Who are you talking about? Yi Guchen replied, I didn't know before, but now my sword tells me. He is the rival of my life. Shimin Shue Hearing this, the great demon became frantic. Dealing with one Yi Guchen was already troublesome enough, and now another formidable opponent appears, comparable to him. It seems I'm doomed today. And with that, he turned to flee, believing that the best plan is to run away. But how could Shimin Shueshua let him escape? With his fingers concentrated, he casually waved his hand, and the great demon's neck burst open instantly. The demon, amazed and curious at the invisible sword formed by his two fingers, exclaimed, an invisible and intangible sword? Just the mere force of the sword is enough to kill? What kind of sword technique is this? However, Shimin Shueshua simply replied indifferently, I just swung a sword casually. It's nothing special, not even worth naming. After injuring the great demon, Wang Feng couldn't help but exclaim, I didn't expect that we would summon Yi Guqing's only rival in his life. Both have reached the state of the sword being one with the heart, but logically, shouldn't Yi Guqing be stronger than Shimin Shueshue? But the system informed him, the summon Shimin Shueshue is from after the decisive battle at the peak of the Forbidden Purple City. By that time, his swordsmanship was fully matured, reaching the realm where there is no sword in the heart, and everything in the world can be a sword. Naturally, he is a bit stronger than Yi Guqing. Wang Feng suddenly realized that it made sense. Now, with the divine immortal sect also having a mystic emperor level expert, it won't be long before they grow stronger. Meanwhile, Yi Guqing, holding the soaring rainbow, pointed at Shimin Shueshue and said, I didn't expect that after the battle in the Forbidden City, we would meet in this way. Shimin Shueshue understood that Yi Guqing wanted to settle their rivalry and gently pushed his long sword away, saying, you are not my opponent at this moment. Let's have a fight when you break through to the mystic emperor realm. Subsequently, Shimin Shueshue bowed with clasped hands towards Wang Feng. Shimin Shueshue pays respect to the sect leader. My apologies for being late. Meanwhile, the great demon struggled to rise, filled with panic. If Elder Yi made a move, I might have had some chance to escape and scathe. With Elder Shimin, perhaps there's still a glimmer of hope to survive. But if this mysterious sect leader intervenes, then my death is certain. Although he seems to only possess the cultivation of an Ascend Chancellor, even mystic emperor realm experts show him such respect. His power must be terrifying indeed. If I'm destined to fall today, I must take someone down with me. With that, he lunged towards Fatty, who cried out in terror, you lack martial virtue. You said you wouldn't dirty your hands with my blood, but now you attack the weakest one when you're losing? Luckily, Yi Guqing intervened in time, saving Fatty, though not without injury. As Soaring Rainbow was sheathed, Fatty also took a heavy fall, realizing, though the divine immortal sect is powerful, against such reckless adversaries, even a genius like me might meet an early end. I must be more cautious in the future. At that moment, Shimin Shueshua's fingers condensed air into a sword and pressed it against the great demon's head, asking, sect leader, how shall we deal with him?
him. Wang Feng held up two fingers and said, Now, you have two choices, hand over all your possessions and join my divine immortal sect, or be used as fertilizer to nourish the flowers and plants of our mountain. I'm doing this because if he could be persuaded, it would earn points for recruiting strong members to the sect. If he turns to evil again, it wouldn't be too late to kill him then. The great demon bellowed in anger. A demon may be killed, but never insulted. However, Fatty interjected, sect leader, he chooses the second option. I will personally bury him and then relieve myself on his grave, ensuring the flowers and plants of our divine immortal sect thrive. As soon as Fatty spoke, Wang Feng was infuriated. Why are you always around? I'll surely have to discipline you into a turtle hermit form later. But as soon as he finished speaking, Fatty received another punch, looking innocently at little Wu, Junior's sister. Why did you hit me? I saw a mosquito on your face, senior brother. Why do these mosquitoes only suck my blood? Could it be that even they know that I carry the blood of a genius? At this, the great demon was so angry that he wanted to tear Fatty apart immediately. However, Wang Feng just grinned and said, I know you're proud and haughty. How about this? Join for a year, and if you want to leave after that, you're free to do so. The great demon was momentarily stunned, seemingly ready to resist, but then he handed over all his belongings. As Wang Feng took the purse, he couldn't help but comment, such a tough talker, but quite honest in action. Eh? Just then, the system notified, congratulations to the host for successfully recruiting Dark Slaughter Demon, rewarding 10,000 set points and a random summoning opportunity. Wang Feng was overjoyed, didn't expect recruiting Great Demon would be so rewarding. Seems like I should recruit more strong beings in the future. Now that the reward is secured, if he truly is a menace to humanity as the Great Demon, it wouldn't be wrong to eliminate him now. So, he probed, what did you mean by your earlier talk of snack? The Great Demon clenched his teeth and, feeling helpless, revealed the truth. It's just a habit of mine, a way to scare others and satisfy my cravings, not something I actually do. Wang Feng was momentarily stunned after hearing the Great Demon's confession and then consulted the system to verify the truth of the claim. Receiving a positive response, he was at a loss for words. Both he and the Great Demon then shared a knowing look and laughed, each with their own cunning thoughts. Wang Feng couldn't help but inwardly mock, damn, you're supposed to be a mighty Great Demon, a once formidable mystic Emperor Realm peak powerhouse. Do you really need to resort to scaring people to satisfy yourself? How cheeky must one be to do such a thing? The Great Demon, on the other hand, thought bitterly, damn it, if it weren't for the fear of you disliking my habit of snack and killing me right away, I would have never revealed the truth. Meanwhile, Little Wu and Fatty saw this as a testament to Wang Feng's formidable capabilities, thinking, just a few words and the powerful Dark Slaughter Demon willingly joins the Divine Immortal Sect. The sect leader's methods are truly terrifying. At that moment, Wang Feng turned and walked towards a thatched cottage, beckoning everyone to follow. All right, stop dawdling outside. Come with me, I'll take you to the real base of the Divine Immortal Sect. Hearing this, Fatty and Little Wu were full of anticipation. I knew the base of the Divine Immortal Sect couldn't just be a mere cottage. The Great Demon also let go of his worries. I never expected to have provoked an ancient, hidden, great sect. Otherwise, how could such a small thatched cottage of a sect have Mystic Emperor and Marquis Realm powerhouses? I must see what this so-called Divine Immortal Sect, this grand hidden sect, is really like. As everyone entered the cramped cottage, it became immediately crowded. Wang Feng then took out a token and shouted, Open! The token slowly hovered in the air, and after a loud noise, a majestic golden gate appeared. Everyone was astounded, and the great demon nearly dropped his jaw. What kind of sect is this? Having its base in a secret realm, to be able to set up base there, what a terrifying hidden sect it must be. Secret realms in the mystic Azure continent are extremely rare, always causing turmoil whenever they appear, because only supreme mystic realm and above powerhouses can create such realms. They often contain treasures left by powerful beings. I didn't expect such an unassuming sect to occupy an entire secret realm. This means that the divine immortal sect was at least founded by a supreme mystic realm powerhouse, and it possesses supreme mystic realm heritage. If I can gain access to it, wouldn't that mean soaring to new heights for me? As everyone stepped into the secret realm, a magnificent hall shrouded in an ethereal aura appeared before them. A large stone steel stood at the entrance, divine immortal sect and Described prominently. The others showed expressions of joy as they approached the hall. Wang Feng turned and advised them to choose any pavilion they liked, but warned against trespassing into forbidden areas. After settling everyone, he pushed open the grand doors to reveal many majestic stone seats and at the center, the sect leader's throne. Seating himself, Wang Feng resolved to fill the hall with supreme mystic realm powerhouses one day. Summoning the system, he used the random summoning opportunity he had just received. To his surprise, he summoned a girl, renowned as the world's foremost beauty, Yao you. The system introduced her as a character from a martial arts novel, the grand mistress of the flower shifting palace, unparalleled in both martial prowess and beauty, comparable to the world's number one divine sword, Yen Nantian. Her cultivation was at the early stage of the mystic emperor realm, and she was skilled in the bright jade art and shifting flowers and transferring jade techniques. As he looked up, Wang Feng noticed ice flowers falling from the stone seat.
ceiling. First, a delicate foot stepped out, followed by a face with a cold expression, and then her full figure appeared, with long, slender legs that left Wang Feng utterly astounded. Is this the world's foremost beauty? Even in my past life, if I had broken my hand painting, I doubt I could capture her beauty. Yao Yu then landed and immediately greeted Wang Feng. Yao Yu pays respect to the sect leader. At this moment, Wang Feng felt a secret thrill, thinking to himself, having the number one beauty in the martial world, bowing to me feels incredibly exhilarating. However, he maintained his composure and spoke, there's no need for excessive formalities. From now on, you shall attend by my side. Yao Yu immediately responded with an affirmation and seated herself on a stone chair, but the cold aura she emitted made Wang Feng shiver uncontrollably. He then suggested she leave for the time being and attend to him when they were outside. After Yao Yu left with a bow, Wang Feng couldn't help but remark, the bright jade art she cultivates is terrifyingly powerful, even when she's not actively using it. Just being near her nearly freezes me stiff. After leaving the hall, Yao Yu casually entered a guest room. Coincidentally, the great demon emerged from the neighboring room, muttering to himself, it's strange. Isn't the divine immortal sect an ancient, hidden, great sect? Why are there only a few strong beings? Where are the others? Could it be that this divine immortal sect is merely a facade with no real substance? As he was about to kick the door to check if the room was occupied, a chilling cold breeze blew towards him. Before he could react, his foot turned into a block of ice. Regaining his senses, he peered through the crack of the door and saw a captivating woman seated on a couch. She spoke coldly, if you dare to intrude again, there's only one outcome for you, death. Startled by the encounter with Yao Yu, the great demon retreated to the side of the building, sweating coldly, another mystic emperor realm powerhouse? It seems like the powerful ones in the divine immortal sect have all been in slumber, and I've accidentally awakened this one with my intrusions. I've been recklessly probing those pavilions, it's like I've been courting death. Ah, I, the dark slaughter demon, have been continuously subdued since my arrival. How utterly frustrating. But then again, latching onto a powerful leg is also a skill. Not everyone gets such an opportunity. The next morning, Little Wu approached Fatty's residence, her face filled with concern. Fatty, seeing her troubled expression, couldn't help but break out in a cold sweat and curiously asked, Junior sister, what brings you here so early? Before he could react, Little Wu's hand had already reached his cheek. Senior brother, no offense meant, and then she slapped him. The slap was so powerful that Fatty was sent flying out, and the whole building trembled with his fall. As he lay on the ground, Little Wu was about to check on him, but he quickly sat up, incredulously looking at her. Junior sister, what was that for? Little Wu was actually shocked and thought, the sect leader didn't lie to me. Senior brother indeed has a terrifying physique. I used one-tenth of a mystic general's power in that strike. Yet, you, a mere mortal, were able to stand up unharmed? Senior brother, it's for your own good. Fatty, bewildered, retorted, you hit me and say it's for my own good. Junior sister, with that attitude, it seems like you're coveting my position as the eldest disciple of divine immortal sect, wanting to overthrow me. Little Wu clarified, senior brother, you're overthinking it. It was the sect leader who asked me to spar with you. He even instructed me that as long as I don't kill you, any method of sparring is acceptable because you have a peerless divine body. Fatty was astonished. Really? A peerless physique? How come I don't know about this? Tell me honestly, junior sister, did I do something wrong and offend the sect leader? Little Wu assured him, senior brother, you truly have a peerless body. Fatty, puzzled, replied, what? Could I really be a peerless genius? But shouldn't cultivating be as easy as drinking water for a peerless genius? Yeah, why am I still immortal? Little Wu explained, that's because your physique hasn't been activated yet. Impatiently, Fatty asked, how do I activate it? The next second, Little Wu's flying kick hit him squarely in the face, saying, simple, by getting beaten. Unexpectedly, this kick had an effect akin to plastic surgery. Fatty hastily pleaded for mercy, junior sister, wait, maybe it's better if the sect leader does it. However, Little Wu playfully replied, the sect leader is afraid he might accidentally kill you with a single palm strike, so he sent me to toughen you up first. Frightened by the sight of Little Wu's hand surrounded by a mystic aura, Fatty was nearly scared out of his wits. Meanwhile, Wang Feng, hearing the pig-like screams emanating from the pavilion, couldn't help but feel a bit of admiration. With such a dedicated junior sister putting her all into helping her senior brother, Fatty is sure to activate his physique and become an unparalleled genius. If it weren't for maintaining the image of the sect leader, I would really like to personally train him into a mystical turtle sage. Meanwhile, on the mist enshrouded over Cloud Peak, tall pavilions loomed. The main hall's plaque boldly declared over Cloud Sect. Inside, a few people gathered, yet the atmosphere was as silent as death. Chen Feng, the sect leader, looked particularly worried. The great elder, Chiu Wanfeng, voiced his concerns. The demon ceiling grand assembly is about to commence, and our young master Chen Xin is unable to break through to the mystic general realm in the short term. I'm afraid the demon ceiling rankings will elude our overcloud sect once again. Look at these old fellows. If this continues, our sect will turn into a retirement home. Chen Feng, however, was not so easily deterred. This demon ceiling grand assembly is crucial. We must find a way to compete. The demon ceiling rankings are tied to joining the Sun Blaze Academy. We can't
can't miss this opportunity. Chiu Wanfeng rebutted sharply. The higher-up specifically ordered that this demon seal and grand assembly can only be contested by the younger generation. But in our set, only the young master has reached the peak of the spirit communication realm. If we let him compete, wouldn't that be tantamount to conceding defeat? Where would that leave our sect's dignity? In the midst of Sai's filling the great hall, Chen Feng suddenly had a moment of inspiration. Since we can't rely on our own members, why don't we look for an external solution? Has anything unusual happened around the Starshine Mountains recently? Chiu Wanfeng stroked his beard and responded, Recently, the gleaming Lin City's Ling family was exterminated by the long-scale Marquis estate. Only Miss Ling managed to escape, and it is said she was chased by the young Marquis to the outskirts of the mountains before disappearing. Chen Feng, although regretful, noted, The Ling family's matter involves the higher echelons of the Sun Blaze Empire. And now, Miss Ling is like a plague. We cannot afford to be associated with her. Then Chiu Wanfeng mentioned another peculiar incident. According to reports from the disciples, a mystic general Rel Mora was detected yesterday in a valley on the outskirts of the mountains, possibly someone who had just made a breakthrough. Hearing this, Chen Feng leaped from his chair. If that's the case, could it be that a young, unaffiliated cultivator found an opportunity on the outskirts of the mountains and broke through to the mystic general realm? The disciple didn't dare to approach and investigate, only sensing the aura from a distance, so it's not confirmed, replied Chiu Wanfeng. Chen Feng was ecstatic. If we can get this young genius to represent our sect in the demon sealing grand assembly, we might stand a chance at ranking. But Chiu Wanfeng expressed his concern. What if this young person already belongs to a sect? Chen Feng replied, if he's from a major sect, then let it be. But if he's from a minor sect, then we'll eliminate his sect and then ensure he stays in our overcloud sect permanently. You'll handle this. Simultaneously, within the vast divine immortal sect, Wang Feng was utilizing 10,000 sect points to redeem a 10 consecutive draw. Surrounded by countless system rewards, he decisively channeled all the cultivation and mystical techniques into himself. Moments later, numerous orbs of light surged into his body, transforming him from a vulnerable figure into a true representative of the divine immortal sect's might. However, on that same day, divine immortal sect had an unwelcome visitor. Chiu Wanfeng, dispatched by the overcloud sect, arrived with disdain upon seeing the sect's plaque. What kind of rubbish sect dares to call itself divine? Even we, the overcloud sect, the largest sect on the outskirts of Starshine Mountains, wouldn't dare such a claim, and they're based in a thatched cottage, no less. It's laughable. Before he could finish his tirade, the wall of the cottage collapsed with a roar, and a massive bloody fist accompanied it. Chiu Wanfeng, caught off guard, found himself intimately interacting with the fist and, unable to handle this force, buried his head in shame into the wall. This unexpected humiliation infuriated him. He began to threaten, dare to ambush me, a great elder of the overcloud sect. If you continue, my sect will make you beg for death. However, as he ranted, Wang Feng and the great demon approached. The great demon was thrilled at the prospect of venting some frustration. Finally, a big fish has come into our net. Wang Feng's face was grim. What rubbish overcloud sect? I've never even heard of it. What do you mean by barking at my sect's door this early in the morning? Chiu Wang Feng was completely shocked, unable to believe that such a small, obscure sect could have such powerful individuals. Seeing Chiu Wang Feng's stunned silence, Wang Feng gestured to the great demon beside him. Little demon, our divine immortal sect always persuades with virtue. This old baby is now your responsibility. Make sure he speaks willingly. Understanding the cue, the great demon quickly formed a massive blood hand and firmly grasped Chiu Wang Feng, while loudly admonishing, you old fool, you're courting death. If you don't want the stone to become your grave, I suggest you start speaking. Frightened, Chiu Wanfeng thought, they talk about persuading with virtue but strike with heavy blows. If I don't speak up, I might not see another day. He quickly divulged, my name is Chiu Wanfeng, the great elder of Overcloud Set. I came here to investigate the mystic general realm aura that appeared in the valley recently. Wang Feng, pondering this, replied, that mystic general aura must be little Wu who recently broke through. But why are you investigating this person? Because the demon ceiling grand assembly is imminent, and our sect doesn't have any mystic general realm disciples to compete for rankings in the demon ceiling rankings. So, we came here to find talented disciples to take back to our sect. But Wang Feng was perplexed. Demon ceiling grand assembly? What's that? Chiu Wang Feng was taken aback. You don't know about the demon ceiling grand assembly? Internally he thought, it's not surprising for such a crude and rude small sect to be unaware. But his moment of hesitation resulted in another intimate encounter between his face and the ground. He then proceeded to explain thoroughly. The demon ceiling grand assembly is held to suppress and seal the millennial dark slaughter demon. It's a decennial event of immense importance in the Sun Blaze Empire. Despite being sealed, the dark slaughter demon's pure demonic aura continually seeps out, corrupting the surrounding area. To counter this, the Sun Blaze Emperor mobilizes the Empire's strongest sect members to kill the beasts tainted by the demonic aura, thereby weakening the dark slaughter demon. However, this time, the Emperor decreed only the younger generation may participate. Hence, all sects are now frantically training their disciples 
and seeking talented individuals outside their sex to secure a top ranking in the demon ceiling rankings. Listening intently, Wang Feng couldn't help but be amused. I must say, you have quite the discerning eye to have pinpointed the very individual the demon ceiling grand assembly is about. The great demon couldn't help but chuckle at the irony. Ha! To think the demon ceiling grand assembly is essentially held for me. At this point, Chiu Wang Feng was sweating profusely, his eyes filled with fear and realization. For you, could you possibly be? Wang Feng couldn't help but feel a bit more worried, thinking, for a supreme leader of a great nation to dread so much, even to the extent of holding the demon ceiling grand assembly every ten years, this dark slaughter demon must not be as simple as it appears on the surface. He then turned around and tentatively asked, little demon, how could you escape so easily after being sealed by so many powerful beings? Facing this sudden question, the great demon seemed to realize Wang Feng's intention and could only confess honestly, master, not to hide from you, over the years I have created a technique of creating avatars. In fact, those old fools only sealed an avatar of mine. At this point, Wang Feng moved towards Chiu Wang Feng to inquire about the demon sealing list. It turned out that the demon sealing list was the ranking list for this assembly, based on the number of demons tainted with demonic aura that were slain. In previous years, the list was only aimed at the older generation of powerhouses, but this time it was open only to the younger generation. Wang Feng was overjoyed upon hearing this, thinking, this assembly will surely gather countless young prodigies. Perhaps I can use this opportunity to complete the system's task of taking in disciples. Then, learning that the assembly would not take place until a month later, he felt secretly thrilled. This gives me ample time. I must perform well then. As he was lost in his thoughts, Chiu Wang Feng started pleading, Boss, now that you know everything you need to know, can you let me go as if I were nothing? Wang Feng walked up to him and said, It's simple if you want me to let you go. You just have to tell me honestly. If you find someone of the mystic general realm, what will you do next? I will bring them back to our sect. Watching Wang Feng's eyes filled with murderous intent, big beads of sweat covered Chiu Wang Feng's forehead. He dared not utter the words instructed by Chen Feng. Seeing his silence, Wang Feng promptly ordered the great demon to exert pressure. To save his life, Chiu Wang Feng had no choice but to confess. If it's someone from a small sect, annihilate their sect and cut off their lineage. No sooner had the words left his mouth than Wang Feng turned his head indifferently. Then, with a wave of his hand, he signaled, kill him. The great demon immediately understood and clenched his left fist. In an instant, Chiu Wang Feng shattered on the spot, and Wang Feng consequently gained 500 sect points. The great demon, with a face of disdain, commented, is this the virtue of the great sects of the Sunblaze Empire? They are even more devilish than a demon. Master, since we've already made enemies with the Overcloud sect, why not just go and wipe them out altogether? Wang Feng thought to himself, this Overcloud sect capable of such tyrannical deeds must be no good. Plus, if they find out about Chiu Wang Feng, the divine immortal sect will likely face endless troubles. With this thought, Wang Feng had made up his mind. Well then, let's go and see for ourselves. Meanwhile, in the imperial capital of the Sunblaze Empire, long-scale prefecture, a green pisho was being used as a desk. The long-scale marquee, Lin Tianxiong, was leisurely admiring a daisy. After a moment, he suddenly inquired of old Wang beside him, Old Wang, why hasn't Uni returned yet? He was just sent to eliminate a remnant of the Ling family. Why is it taking so long? Lord Marquis, I have already sent someone to notify young Master Uni. He might already be on his way back. Just then, old Wang's waste token began to buzz. Lord Marquis, there's a message. It's probably young Master Uni worrying about you waiting anxiously and has sent a message back first. At least the boy has some conscience, knowing I'm worried about him. Quick, check the voice talisman. I want to hear what the lad has to say. But after old Wang listened to the message, he was immediately overcome with grief, his whole body trembling as he said, Young Master Yuni, he, he is dead. Upon hearing the news, Lin Tianxiong was instantly enraged, and in a fit of fury, he killed the Pishio beside him. Who is the blind fool who dared to kill my heir? I swear I'll tear them to shreds. The next day, Sun Blaze City was as peaceful as ever, bustling and busy. The commander of the city guard, Li Qingchen, looked upon the scene with satisfaction. However, in the next moment, he spotted an imposing army slowly approaching the city gates. Recognizing the familiar Pishio, a cold sweat broke out on his forehead. He quickly leapt down to stand in front of the crowd and angrily shouted, Long Scale Marquis Lin Tianxiong, you mobilized the Long Scale Legion out of the Imperial City without authorization. Do you realize this is an unforgivable crime? I am well aware. I am ashamed of betraying His Majesty's trust, but my only son was brutally murdered in the Starshine Mountains. Once I have avenged him, I will return to confess my crime to His Majesty. Li Qingchen was still profoundly shocked, thinking, Lin Yuni was his only weakness. Who would have the audacity to kill his son? As he pondered, Lin Tianxiong, seeing no intention of yielding from Li Qing Chen roared furiously, Li Qing Chen, I am giving you face because you are the commander of the guards. If you don't step aside, don't blame me for taking action. Even if the heavenly king himself were here today, no one could stop me from retrieving my son. Just as Li Qing Chen was unsure of how to proceed, a voice came from within the floating city, Qing Chen, let him pass. His son's death 
has made him irrational. Though it is an offense, it is understandable. Let him return and immediately come to find me. Hearing this, Li Qingqin quickly stepped aside, allowing Lin Tianxiong to pass. Go then, and upon your return, seek out his majesty to confess your sins. Lin Tianxiong, realizing the situation, expressed his gratitude. Thank you for your understanding, your majesty. Once I have avenged my son and retrieved him, I will certainly come forward to confess my sins. As he watched the formidable army march away, Li Qingqin couldn't help but feel a sense of foreboding, suspecting that a storm of blood and violence was about to erupt in the martial world. Meanwhile, Wang Feng and his companions Yao Yu and others had arrived at Overcloud Sect. As soon as they landed, they noticed a purple-haired young man, Li Hei, being bullied and beaten by a group while he pleaded with his forehead in his hands. I don't know how I've offended the young master. Please forgive my ignorance and let me go. The one bullying him was Chen Xin, the young master of Overcloud Sect. He taunted Li Hei, saying, I graciously offered you a kiss, because you look somewhat handsome, and yet you dared to dodge. Don't you think you deserve a beating? Chen Xin's followers, known as the Three Uglies of Overcloud Sect, thank our parents for giving birth to us so ugly. Otherwise, sooner or later, our butts would blossom not. If it weren't for us being the Three Uglies of the Overcloud Sect, perhaps the sect leader wouldn't have chosen us to serve the young master. As Chen Xin became increasingly excited in his beating, continuously shouting from his mouth, a menial disciple is just a menial disciple, can't even take a few hits before breaking down. Truly a piece of useless trash that's only good in appearance. Wang Feng, observing from the side, this young master of Overcloud Sect is so tyrannical and wicked, it's clear that the sect itself is no good. Just then, his system chimed in with a notification congratulating him on discovering a peerless genius. Wang Feng was shocked and appalled. Damn, system, don't tell me this guy is the peerless genius you're talking about. However, to his relief, the camera shifted, indicating that the genius was actually the bullied purple-haired Li Hei. Wang Feng was puzzled, a peerless genius, and yet he's being bullied like this. Could it be that he, like Fatty, is a mere mortal with an extraordinary physique? With that thought, Wang Feng leaped down and hurriedly intervened to stop the bullying. Shut your mouth. However, Chen Xin, with an air of disdain, sneered, I'd like to see who dares to shut me up. Upon seeing Wang Feng's appearance, Chen Xin's demeanor shifted to a twisted obsession. Little prince, I advise you to surrender. Today, you shall be the one to receive my precious kiss. Wang Feng almost laughed at the absurdity and then coldly commanded, Yao Yu, slap him for me. As soon as the words fell, accompanied by a chill, Yao Yu stepped forward, her stunning beauty making even the three uglies of overcloud sect drool. However, Chen Xin reacted differently. He trembled with rage, his pupils filled with blood. No one is allowed to be more beautiful than me. Seize this woman immediately. I will ensure she meets a bitter end. The three uglies moved quickly to surround Yao Yu, teasing her before making their move. Little beauty, you're unlucky to fall into the hands of the overcloud sect's three uglies. If we lay our hands on you, you'll wish for death. Wang Feng inwardly feared for them, thinking, I, as a sect master, wouldn't dare to harass Yao Yu. I can't imagine how dreadful their fate will be. Yao Yu gently placed her finger on one of their cheeks, lightly slashed it, and with an elegant turn, the three uglies became headless ice sculptures. Chen Xin was terrified by her prowess. Before he could react further, Yao Yu teleported in front of him, pressing a finger against his cheek. Just as he was on the verge of death, Li Hei stepped in, stopping Yao Yu's attack, causing his own arm to turn into an ice sculpture. Despite the apparent pain, his expression remained stoic. Wang Feng was puzzled by Li Hei's actions, and Yao Yu, seeing this, promptly withdrew her spirit force, questioning, he has humiliated you like this, and yet you still save him? At that moment, Chen Xin, who was sitting paralyzed on the ground, burst into laughter. Li Hei, as long as you kill them, I will reward you generously with ten sweet kisses. No sooner had his voice faded than a hand fiercely grabbed his neck. In a swift motion, he was lifted high. Chen Xin still attempted a futile struggle. Li Hei, you've got some nerve to treat me this way. However, Li Hei's eyes were filled with murderous intent. I was planning to leave you until tomorrow, but you insist on seeking death to prevent you from dying by someone else's hand, which would be a lifelong regret for me. I had to make the first move. After throwing the fallen Chen Xin to the ground, he finally felt a sense of relief. This act also stunned Wang Feng, who stood nearby. It seems this extraordinary genius wasn't as simple as he imagined. Wang Feng, watching his personality change drastically, was filled with curiosity. He quickly switched to the system to inquire why Li Hei was called an extraordinary genius, but the system showed that the investigation would cost a thousand sect points. Despite the pain of the cost, driven by curiosity, Wang Feng didn't hesitate to hit the confirm button. It turns out that Li Hei's real name was Li Changgong, once a supreme mystic at the pinnacle, who fell unexpectedly. Only by acquiring a treasured item did he reincarnate into the current Li Hei. Hearing this, Wang Feng shuddered to think that a supreme mystic, someone capable of annihilating a country single-handedly, had such strength in his past life. Why then, did he suffer bullying without fighting back? As informed by the system, Wang Feng learned the reason Li Hei acted this way was solely to hide the secret of his reincarnation. However, anyone who dared to insult him would not live to see the sun the next day. At that moment, Wang Feng couldn't help but feel humbled. Compared to him, I am nothing
anything but trash. Indeed, one should never judge by appearances. Then he proceeded to inquire, what is Li Hei's current cultivation level? After Li Hei's reincarnation, due to the fusion of a remnant soul with an unparalleled treasure, caused his aptitude to skyrocket once again. It's been only a year since he awoke, and he has already broken through to the Ascend Chancellor realm. After reading the system's explanation, Wang Feng fell into deep thought. He hadn't expected that what he once jokingly suggested to Fatty, that one could achieve Ascend Chancellor in a year, could actually be true. Considering Li Hei had once reached the pinnacle of Supreme Mystic, and now his talent had soared again, his future prospects were bound to be immeasurable. No wonder he was deemed an extraordinary genius by the system. It seemed that only the Divine Immortal Sect could accommodate such a hidden dragon. Having learned all this, Wang Feng quickly extended an invitation. Young man, you have just killed the young master of the Overcloud Sect. You probably can't stay here anymore. Why not come with me? My sect will protect you thoroughly. But Li Hei looked disdainful. And what qualifies you? Instead of getting angry, Wang Feng remained very calm. The fact that I know your past, Li Chang Gong. Hearing his real name, Li Hei immediately fell into contemplation. In the entire periphery of the Starshine Mountains, there are no mystic emperor realm experts. Yet now, such a high-level expert is willing to be subordinate to this man. And he seems to harbor no ill will towards me. Perhaps I should go and assess the situation first. If things go south, I'll use my trump card. With this thought, Li Hei accepted Wang Feng's invitation. But at that moment, a deep, resounding voice echoed throughout the plaza. Who dares to harm Chen Feng's beloved son? Moments later, Chen Feng, trembling all over, approached the lifeless body of his son. Gazing upon the cold corpse, he was immediately overtaken by grief, tears streaming down his face. Then, he swiftly turned his furious gaze towards Yao Yu and accused, the three protectors I sent to guard my son, you must have killed them, right? After receiving an affirmative response from Yao Yu, he roared like a madman, so it was you who killed my son too. If that's the case, then you can forget about leaving the Overcloud sect alive. Upon hearing this, the nearby elders lamented, such a peerless beauty, it would be a shame for her to die so young. Li Hei, seeing this, was about to speak up, but Wang Feng stopped him with a hand, do you want to exchange your life for hers? In the next moment, Chen Feng, who was just mourning his son, shifted his lecherous attention to Yao Yu. However, if you give me a son, that would be considered an exchange of life for life. Seeing this, Wang Feng couldn't help but internally critique, damn, I almost thought he cared about his son. Turns out he's just a lascivious old man who forgets his son at the sight of a woman. He then instructed Yao Yu, since he's so eager to see his son, let's grant him his wish. No sooner had the words fallen than Yao Yu slowly approached Chen Feng, her blue eyes filled with boundless murderous intent. Just as they were about to clash, Chen Feng patted his chest and declared, actually, I am a person who cherishes beauty. To avoid any unpleasantness, let me strike a blow. If the beauty can evade it, then my son's death will be in vain. But if you can't dodge, you must stay and bear me a healthy son. Yao Yu remained silent, fixating a dead deadly stare on Chen Feng. Seeing her silent, Chen Feng shamelessly assumed her consent. Then, countless white energies gathered in his palm as he leaped into the air, shouting, over cloud palm. Facing the enormous incoming palm strike, Yao Yu did not show any intention of dodging. When the palm made contact, it didn't harm her but instead trapped her in a massive gaseous sphere. Seconds later, a drop of blood fell from the sky, instantly turning into countless red needles, shooting rapidly towards Yao Yu. After the dust settled, a huge palm imprint was all that remained on the square. The onlooking elders of the Overcloud sect realized that all the sect master's previous actions were to confuse the opponent and kill her in one strike. They murmured, such a waste of beauty, at least enjoy it a bit first. Yet, Chen Feng declared, no matter how peerless the beauty, anyone who dares kill my son deserves only death. On the side, Li Hei was perplexed and urgently turned to Wang Feng. You just watched her get killed? You might be misunderstanding Yao Yu's strength, and which of your eyes saw her dead? Just then, a corpse plummeted from the sky, causing the elders to panic. Sect master, look, someone from our Overcloud sect has fallen from the clouds. As beads of sweat dripped down Chen Feng's forehead, Yao Yu appeared above him, declaring, you missed with your strike just now. She then leapt down from the platform, her palm surrounded by a blue mystic aura. Now, let's see if you can dodge my strike. As the woman closed in, Chen Feng, though panicked, conjured a palm to counter, refusing to believe she could be so powerful. However, the moment their palms met, an ice wall formed in front of Chen Feng, quickly sprouting countless ice spikes that shot towards him. Within two seconds, Chen Feng was transformed into a porcupine, meeting his son as he had wished. Observing the fearsome woman, the overcloud sect elders trembled in hiding, never imagining that a peak ascend chancellor realm expert could fall so easily before her. With the sect master now dead, they were unsure of their next steps until Wang Feng indifferently declared, in the name of the sect master of the divine immortal sect, I announce that the overcloud sect is no more. You all may disband right here. After that, he left the place with Yao Yu, watching the two figures recede into the distance. Elder Wang finally exhaled in relief, then, quickly changing his demeanor, he 
proclaim, don't think that a few harsh words will dissolve the overcloud sect. Now that both the sect master and the young master are gone, for the continuity of our sect, it seems we need to promptly elect a new sect master. Elder Su, trembling, stated, the overcloud sect will no longer have a succeeding sect leader. His expression was one of sheer terror. As soon as the words left his mouth, a massive chunk of ice was seen hurtling towards the sect's main hall. As it descended, a loud crash was heard, leaving nothing but ruins of the sect. Elder Wan, witnessing the scene, felt utterly disheartened. Just then, a resonant voice echoed across the plaza. Where's Chin Fong? Elder Wang was so frightened that he nearly wet himself, thinking the murderous god had returned. Yet, it was the long-scale marquee, calming him momentarily. Right, that god of death had just killed Chin Fong and left. However, as he was lost in thought, the long-scale marquee had already approached him, loudly inquiring, Are you Chin Fong? Faced with the fierce beast in front of him, Elder Wang stuttered, No, I am not. Our sect leader is already dead. At that moment, the long-scale marquee revealed his purpose. I am the long-scale marquee of the Sun Blaze Empire. Do you know who killed my son, Lin Yuni? Seeing his son murdered had Elder Wang utterly shocked, wondering who could be so bold as to lay hands on the son of a marquee of a nation. After some contemplation, he decided to misdirect the disaster, replying to the marquee, I know who killed your son. Hearing this, the long-scale marquee's eyes were filled with bloodshot rage. The very person who killed the young marquee is also the murderer of our sect leader, and he claims to be the sect leader of the divine immortal sect. Meanwhile, the great demon, who had been guarding the gate, upon seeing Wang Feng's return, immediately released the chicken he had been toying with for a long time and rushed to Wang Feng, not hesitating to shower him with flattery. Sect leader is truly awe-inspiring, having annihilated the overcloud sect and triumphantly returned in merely a couple of hours. At the same time, Li He landed smoothly. Wang Feng extended his invitation again. What have you decided? Would you like to join my divine immortal sect? However, upon seeing the sect's dwelling, Li He immediately felt reluctant. Even in my previous life, as a being at the pinnacle of the supreme mystic realm, the sect I established never dared to call itself divine immortal. And this insignificant place, barely fit for birds, dares to take such a lofty name. It's utterly ridiculous. With a face full of disdain, he continued, how can a sparrow understand the ambition of a swan? Following you here has been a complete waste of time. Upon hearing these words, the great demon was instantly displeased. In a blink, he locked onto Li He's forehead, his eyes filled with immense killing intent. You'd better watch how you speak to the sect leader. However, Wang Feng was not angered. Instead, he remained calm and retorted, even if you were a peak supreme mystic in your past life, right now, you're nothing more than an Ascend Chancellor, a novice. If you try anything here, you won't stand a chance. Realizing he was facing such a powerful being, the great demon quickly stepped aside. Oh my, this young man is actually a reincarnation of a powerful figure. Even in my prime, I'd be no match for such an existence, as insignificant as an ant in comparison. Seeing Li He unmoved, Wang Feng took out a token of the small world, intending to show him the true dwelling of the sect, hoping for a change of heart. As the entrance to the secret realm opened, the vast divine immortal sect instantly appeared before them. Li He was shocked. Though a supreme mystic realm powerhouse can create a small world, even in my past life, I've never seen such a vast and well-developed one. I must see what mysteries lie within this sect. As they just stepped into the main hall, Wang Feng continued, I know you possess a treasure, but it hasn't caught my eye. I have only one aim for you, that is to join the divine immortal sect. However, Li He seemed unimpressed. What if I refuse to join? At a snap of Wang Feng's fingers, Yi Guqing and Shi Min Shui Shui appeared. Seeing two more mystic emperor powerhouses, Li He found the situation increasingly intriguing. What's this? You want to force me to join with numbers? Even with three mystic emperor realm powerhouses, I can still leave and skate with that treasure. Before Wang Feng could reply, a sharp sound of a sword scraping the ground interrupted him, and a terrifying pressure swept through the hall. A man in a black robe appeared before them. What if four mystic emperor realm powerhouses joined hands? He then respectfully approached Wang Feng, subordinate Yen 13, at your service, sect leader. It turns out this new arrival, Yen 13, was a peak mystic emperor, known as a first-rate swordsman among the sword fanatics. His life's ambition was to surpass the sword supreme, Xia Xiaofeng. Yen 13 was famous for his lethal 13 swords technique, and after creating a 14th variation, he created the 15th in his duel with Xia Xiaofeng, symbolizing destruction and death. But realizing the devastation it caused, he chose to destroy it by cutting his own throat. Upon seeing Yen 13, Li He was astounded, yet within seconds, he began to tease Wang Feng. You, as the sect leader, only possess the cultivation of a mystic emperor. Do you really deserve to be the leader? No sooner had Li He finished speaking than Yen 13's long sword was already at his neck, suggesting, it seems, the lethal 15th sword needs to make a comeback. Yet, Wang Feng immediately intervened, Elder Yen, let's stay calm. It's just a peak mystic emperor realm cultivation. If I desire it, I can have it any time. He then checked his sect points, marveling at the number before him. I didn't expect to have amassed 40,000 sect points so quickly. Now I can really show off. He immediately spent 10,000 sect points 
for a 10 draw reward, and numerous glowing orbs encircled him. He then augmented one tenth of Yen 13's cultivation onto himself. Moments later, a majestic golden light surged into Wang Feng, propelling him to the peak of the Mystic Emperor realm. Li He was utterly astonished, filled with questions. Was he hiding his cultivation all along, or can he really elevate to the peak of Mystic Emperor realm in an instant? As sweat dripped down his forehead, Wang Feng, with a smug smile, extended his right hand and inquired, I've reached the peak of the Mystic Emperor realm quite accidentally. Do you have anything else to say now? Yet, Li He remained defiant, unwilling to submit easily as someone who had once stood at the pinnacle. Even if the Divine Immortal Sect has four Mystic Emperor realm powerhouses, you can't force me to submit. At best, we'll both suffer greatly. You've missed counting one more. Upon hearing this, Li He was taken aback, not expecting another hidden expert. He quickly asked who it was, and Wang Feng gestured towards Yi Guchen. Li He was puzzled. Do you take me for a three-year-old? He's merely at marquee level now. How can he leap across that chasm? Wang Feng waved his hand confidently. He might not be now, but he will be shortly. Have you ever heard of impartation from afar? Today, you'll witness it. Silly talk. Even in my past life with Supreme Mystic Realm Peak Cultivation, I couldn't achieve what you claim of impartation from afar. Wang Feng, retorted, what you couldn't achieve as a Supreme Mystic, doesn't mean I can't as a Mystic Emperor. Watch closely. He then lightly tapped Yi Guqing's forehead, instructing the system to transfer all the other cultivation onto Yi Guqing. Instantly, a golden light emerged from Yi Guqing's forehead, followed by numerous golden rays infusing into him. Ultimately, Yi Guqing successfully ascended to the Mystic Emperor realm, witnessing his lifelong rival's promotion. Even Shimin Shuishua's face revealed a hint of joy. Thanks to the sect leader, I can now have a worthy duel with him. Li Hei was completely flustered, exclaiming, damn, he really helped this elder Yi ascend to the Mystic Emperor realm. Now facing four Mystic Emperors plus the sect leader himself, he realized he had no chance of victory. However, Wang Feng didn't push him too hard. Now that you see the situation clearly, join my divine immortal sect. I can not only restore you to your peak, but even help you surpass your past self. Seeing no other way out, Li Hei relented. I'll join, but let's make it clear. I'll only join for 10 years. Once the time is up, I'll leave, and you must not disclose any information about the treasure I possess. The so-called treasure of Li Hei was of little interest to Wang Feng, who was more keen on the system rewards for recruiting a reincarnated supreme mystic. Agreeing to the terms, Li Hei promptly handed over all his possessions, thus earning 30,000 sect points and a summoning chance for Wang Feng. Wang Feng couldn't help but marvel. Taking a risk against a reincarnated supreme mystic really paid off. High risk, high return indeed.